In this video, we go over how to articulate how a program works, arguing for its correctness and its efficiency using logic and reasoning, test data and user feedback. While writing a program from scratch is an important skill, it is also equally important that you can look at a completed program and analyse its effectiveness. The example states that when presented with written program code, you need to be able to articulate how the program works and argue for its correctness and efficiency using logical reasoning, test data and user feedback. Here we have a very simple Python program that presents the user with a menu of three numbered options. The user is then prompted to enter a number. The input line casts the typed character to an integer. The while loop keeps asking them to enter a choice until they enter either 1, 2 or 3. So how can we articulate how the program works, arguing for its correctness using logical reasoning and test data? So although the program is trivial, we can still produce some sensible tests. The program clearly presents a numbered menu from 1 to 3. The while loop provides some very simple validation, repeatedly asking the user to enter a choice. The intention here is that the program will not move on until the user has entered a valid input from the menu, either 1, 2 or 3. So a good start would be to provide a range of test data, supply this data when prompted to enter a choice and see how the program behaves. Test data falls into three broad categories. We have normal data, that's data you would normally expect the user to input. Boundary data, that's data that sits on either edge of the range of normal and valid data. And erroneous, that's data that should generate an error. So here we come up with a test table with a range of erroneous, normal and boundary data and the expected output the program should produce. Now our first test is actually trying to supply no data, so we simply press enter, we don't type anything. You should always check this special case of no data being entered. This isn't strictly erroneous data, but it certainly isn't what we want the user to do. We then have a range of erroneous or invalid data, data that should be rejected by the program. It's outside the range, or it's not even a number. Now, the ones highlighted here in green, although these are all classified as erroneous samples, they will actually cause the program to behave in different ways. The minus six and the minus eight will cause the program to continue to operate, asking the user to enter a new choice but the J, the hash symbol, and 2.5 would cause the program to crash when it attempts to cast them to an integer. Now this could be handled more gracefully using exception handling, which is something we looked at back in SLR2. So having run these tests, you might choose to alter your code and make it more robust by adding some exception handling. Test number seven covers normal, typical or valid data, data that should be accepted by the program without causing any errors. One and three are what we call boundary, extreme or edge data, data of the correct type that is on either edge of the accepted validation limits. Now the inputs naught and four would also be considered boundary data in this scenario. Now they're technically erroneous because they are outside the valid range, but we're better off referring to these special cases as boundary as they sit on the other edge of the acceptable range. So look at the following information on a sign for a car park. Study the information carefully. What potential scenarios would you want to test for? You can see we'll have to pull this information out. How much are we being charged depending on the number of hours we stay? Are there reduced hours? Evenings are at a cheaper rate after 6pm. Sundays have a flat rate. How much is being charged for lost or damaged tickets or cards? 
there are given opening hours, so outside of those, you shouldn't be able to be charged at all. We can come up with a range of appropriate tests. We'd want to test for half an hour of parking, one hour, one and a half hours, parking on a Sunday, evening parking past 7pm, parking before 9.30, after 9.30, and what happens if we attempt to park outside the opening hours. Now, user feedback is another excellent way to argue for the correctness of a program. A user should not simply be someone you consult at the start and then never speak to again until the product's complete. Regular feedback with the user keeps a project focus. It ensures you develop the actual system they need. It provides opportunities for discussion and makes the user feel part of the ongoing and finished solution. At the end of the day, if the user is not happy with the finished product or it doesn't fulfill its intended purpose, it may need rewriting. Having watched this video, you should be able to answer the following key questions. Why is testing a program with a range of test data important? What is the difference between normal boundary and erroneous data? And why is user feedback important when arguing for the correctness of a program?